Wait, then. Hey there. Gorilla. Car I drove for my uh, campaign through this. So, yeah. Le since learned it's a crap car, but I just got it because of the colour. <laughs> See how she flies though. I'm going to talk to myself for a bit about bikes. It's not bothered about getting from shift to being the same. And I can just get whatever the fuck. I just think it'll look horrible, and I don't think it'll like having two different feeling shifters. It's not too bad if they were both side pull, but the one's going to be front pull and one's going to be throwing the gear out the side. Because I think it's going to look horrible having that integrated cables, except <laughs> it'd just be absolutely dreadful. Is so expensive, so if anyone wants a fucking arm and a leg for it, 5800 is pretty good, uh, 5700 sorry, Browser compatibility chart mid run here. Modern Claris. 
should be tail pull. Should come out the back. Sora still comes out of the side? Fucking hell. Nah, R3000 comes out of the back.
Oh, what science boost does do. Hey Turbo, thank you for the tip. I can't see what it is. Is she birthday? One crash repairs, true. Is it your birthday? Because you used the birthday thing. Apparently. Apparently that's a B-Day emoji. According to... Fair enough. Fuck, this car... It's annoying that somebody told me that it's bad, because now I know it's bad, I can't ignore the fact it's bad. Oh well. I can't believe that I went through all the cars in Group S, because I had a horrible time in Group B when I played the career the first time, because I picked... a just kept picking cars and not being able to do it. So when I got to group B, I literally took them all to time trial and just did the same track again and again until I found the car that suited me best. I can't believe it was this one and not like the other gorilla. Happy birthday for tomorrow. I'm kind of rambling around and looking up crash repairs for bicycles at the minute because I fucked up earlier and snapped a shift lever not entirely my fault probably did use, well definitely did use a bit too much force but they can be, the problem is it's in this like weird generation so shift ge gear cables used to come out the side of your brakes and then they'd go into the frame and then they started putting them under the bar tape on road bikes. They started putting them out the back of the bike and down under the bar tape. And there is one, but then shortly after they did that, they changed to a different design of uh, front mech so that you didn't have to pull so hard. They basically gave it a bigger lever arm. 
good idea, I understand it. However, and it's not as bad as the uh, other one. However, how compatible these two systems are is generally considered up for debate. There's some people who say, fuck it, put anything with anything. Take a SRAM mountain bike front shifter and pair it with a Shimano road bike front mech, the actual like, so the shift is the bit you press with your hand and the mech is the bit that actually hits the chain. Uh, put them two together and it'll work fine. And there's other people saying you basically can't use anything out of spec. So there's one generation that works. And it's two parts and one of them is ludicrously expensive because anything with Ultegra on it people seem to think is incredible and twice the fucking price it should be. And they're all more expensive than they were brand new. There are RPs fucking less than what people are charging for. Like 150 quid for a shifter. Fuck no. So I don't have a shifter on my bike. But there's a few for like 30, 40 quid. So there's that. Which isn't bad. The, but my dad is currently deliberating on whether he actually gives a shit how his bike looks. I'm trying to advise him, because basically it's the difference between a 20 quid shifter and a little bit of waiting to make sure we get one that works, or guarantee you I can find one now because the generation, the, the guaranteed will work was like 20 years of fucking brakes, and people are selling those things off as long as they don't consider them vintage, because they're not actually... They're vintage in terms of age, but they're not vintage in terms of anyone giving a shit because they're not high-end. Is the thing. But they're decent. So, yeah, if he doesn't care that the cable comes out the side on one brake, it'd be fine if it was both. Yeah, 20 years is vintage. 20 years old is vintage. Some of these parts aren't 20 years old, though, is the worst thing. That, that's the, the funniest thing to me is some of these parts because people are saying they're vintage because their original production one was 20 years ago but then they got like minor updates and they never change uh, Shimano parts, bike parts they never change the model but they get minor updates and you can see that they've got minor updates and if you look very carefully there is another number that tells you the year they were made and kind of the, the minor revision but effectively they get better through refinement but they're all, they're all compatible and they look the same. But they, you know, over time, they, they never change the price, but they'll use better parts. And plastics especially. 20-year-old plastics, terrible. 10-year-old plastics in, 20, in 10 years when they're 20 years old will be so much better. Especially clear plastics. So if the shifter's got uh, a little window to see what gear you're in, It'll be yellow if it's 20 years old. Yeah, cars... There's always a difference with, like, depends what it is, how old it is, and, like, retro stuff. Your bike? What's up with your bike? Hey, that thing's a relic. <laughs> They'd call that a relic. I fucking love the old Peugeots from the 80s, though. If I get a road road bike, because my road bike is a gravel bike, or what they now call a gravel bike, it's a cyclocross bike. If I ever get a road road bike for purely going fast, I want a Peugeot from the 80s. White, with the finish, with the, the stripes. With uh, the checkered flag, that's it. Checkered flag up the seat post. Umming and ahhing about whether I'd retro mod it with some slightly newer parts. The coloured stripes are also cool, but I want the black and white ones. Tommy Simpson. The the umming and ahhing is like whether would I would I put modern parts on it or would I keep the down tube shifters? The thing is, if if I end up having to buy two shifters, if the only way, like the cheapest way to get shifters is two shifters with my dad's bike, I'd have 
enough shift as that if I ever did that to put modern stuff. Oh yeah, they're all cheap as chips. But the thing is, they're so simple that if you can get them clean and rust free, they're perfect. And the parts on them are cheap because a five speed, it'll be five speed. Um, yeah. Down tube shifters are dangerous. They are, they are so dangerous. But not, not if you know how to use them. But like, they're terrifying when, my main problem is when I see somebody else using them in a group ride and I don't know that person's skill level. It's like, I'm not confident cycling next to some people who ride with us when they're taking a drink of water because they're going to wipe me the fuck out. You've bent the... How'd you bend that shit? Those things are solid. Fuck. Play defrag. I'll play defrag after I finish this. Even still, fucking hell. Although at the same time, to be fair, I snapped the gear shifter inside and it's like cast iron piece. What I snapped. It, it should not have fucking gone. I'm, I'm pissed at myself for doing it, but it was one of those where it just went there was no like something's about to break and then it broke it was i didn't even realize for a bit until i was like why is nothing moving why is this not springing back and then there was a piece wobbling around and i pulled it out and it was like oh fuck the spring that's why it's not springing back because the spring is part of this assembly oh shit Oh, they're always a one millimetre threshold. They're always pretty tight for gearing. Yeah. I Honestly, the amount of tightness for gearing, I've given up. I, I will never buy a bike that has more than 10 gears on it. That's, that's my decision in life. I will not buy a bike that has more than 10 gears on it. Annoyingly... Can't get high quality nine anymore. And hydraulic hydraulic brakes are really nice, but hydraulic brakes don't come below ten. Mountain bike, pretty good, because you can mix and match because the brakes and the shifter is different. Who the fuck needs twelve So so when I say 10 gears, I mean 10 on the back. 10 on the back, 2 up front. Turbo's fucking around with 10 gears with 2 up front and 5 at the back. And Phalex has 12, 12 gears all at the back. And, uh, and nothing at the front. Just, just, uh, just a cog. The difference is the ratio. Because you... Realistically, Felix, you don't need 12 gears. You need three that are really widely spaced apart. And turbo, you need a single speed. <laughs> single speeds are good for, for commuting. If it's, if it's all flat, single speeds are pretty, pretty sick. My next commuter is going to have a hub gear, because I want it to. Just out of... Out of whatever. I've got a hub gear commuter, but I want a, like... Fast hub gear commuter rather than a cruiser. But I've got to break my current one. <laughs> I gave it my best shot, but it was fixable for 20 quid, so I fixed it. And I'll keep fixing it until it completely bites the bullet. And then I'll be sad because it's a great bike. But I, just, I love... Ah, oh, fuck off. 
Seems like it's got a CVT. What's a CVT? SEs are pretty good. Ah, oh, right. Oh, yeah, the big wheel BMXs do a bit, yeah. I've only ridden them a couple of times. But they, yeah, they do just a bit. Just the way that they ride, because the, because as you get faster, the momentum just carries the wheels, and it's like, but but they're so easy to get up to speed, and then they cruise so well at the top speed. They're like a, a bit an actual BMX getting up to speed, and then when they get to the top speed, they're like a mountain bike, and they just rip. They're, yeah, they, I I know what you mean. You can get push bikes with CVTs actually. They're really rare. They are really rare and they've never really worked. <laughs> I kind of want one. The closest to a CVT that you'll find is like um, quite a lot of... There was a trend in folding bikes for a while to put a two-speed in. And once you get over a certain speed. But then the best part about it, everybody used to... There was a recommendation that if you got the SRAM one of a certain era... Um, you should take the spring, so it used a spring and a ball to figure out how fast you were going. Take the spring, and I can't remember if it was double it up or half it or some, something to adjust the spring rate so that it wouldn't change when it did because it changed in the wrong place. It changed gear in completely the wrong place for anybody and everyone hated it. So the recommendation when they became cheap was take it apart Regrease everything while you're in there because it will be absolutely fucked, and uh, change the change the point when it automatically changes gear, which is sick. And there's a mod you can do to a broken Sturmy Archer three-speed where you turn it into a two-speed fixie, which is nuts. A fucking geared fixies. Bikes are cool as all hell. They really are. Yeah. The best part is with the geared fixie, you want to shift up when you're braking because that gear reduction will also mean you have to put less power backwards so you want the harder gear when you're braking because it will be trying to spin the pedals less. It does sound terrifying though, a two speed fixed gear hub. I saw a Sturmy Archer uh, advert, brochure advert, a long time ago, uh, and from the 1800s. It was like, here's your two-speed fixed gear hub, and then on the other side, here's your uh, three-speed coaster brake hub. And Sturmy Archer still hasn't made a uh, hub that's got more than five gears in it. And their five gear is absolutely massive. Um, it's not Shimano. Shimano makes an eight speed, but there's it's not Shimano. Who makes it? Someone makes one that's the same size as the wide range five speed from Sturmy Archer. Same size, but it's an eight speed uh, motor. Eight speed e-bike. And the whole thing, the pat, the hub is the gears and the uh, and the electric motor, and it's like fucking hell, Sturmy Archer. Why can you not have something? Why why are you actually crap? But they do make the three-speed AW hub, which I don't know what it stands for, but I was once told it stands for always works, and I've got one, and it froze once, so I filled it with WD-40 shook it about a bit, put some fresh oil in it, and it started working again. And it hasn't failed me since. The maintenance requirements on that hub 
is two drops of oil every two weeks. That is genuinely the actual maintenance from Sturmiata themselves. Two drops of oil every two weeks. That's what they tell you to do. And it's a classic, if it's not leaking oil, it's out of oil as well. If there's not oil dripping down the spokes, you've run out of oil, put some more oil in it because it's not sealed. Do you grease the bearings? No, you don't. Because the bearings are in the same place as the oil that you put into it. Just got to be careful not to use anything that these days, it didn't used to be a problem when they first were making them, but these days with synthetic chain oils, you've got to be careful not to use anything that leaves a residue. Like muck off. Muck off sab. Do not use muck off. PSA, don't use muck off chain oil. The cleaning stuff's alright. I don't like the chain cleaning device, like the chain scrubber machine that they've got, uh, mostly because it discards chain uh, degreaser straight away. It literally just runs straight through and goes into an exo export. You can use degreaser like three or four times before it's even a problem, uh, is why. Um, and the park tool one's cheaper and cycles degrees around itself again and again. But anyway, the uh, yeah, the muck off chain oil. The dry one sucks because it just does nothing. All dry lube sucks. Use all weather. Um, the wet lube leaves a residue that will never come off. I was washing my dad's bike earlier well, before I broke it. Um, and he it's just covered it's never going to come off it's absolutely caked I was scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing and it got to the point where I was scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing and I washed it off and I could still see the blackness and I thought I'm going to give it one last go and before the bubbles had been coming the bubbles of the cleaner had been coming out brown and they were coming out clean. There was, it was just bubbles. It was just clean soap bubbles. I was like, it's not doing anything then. Scrubbing for days, it's not doing anything. Oh yeah, I cry if someone's chains completely dry as fuck. It's like way too wet is better because it won't seize up. I need to order some bar tape. Annoyingly I've left it too late because I don't really want to put the bar tape on and have the potential that everything breaks because I've got to do some other stuff. Um, change the gear cables and stuff. But the I don't want to use... Yeah, I don't want it to break before we go on a long ride so I can't change the bar tape I wish I was confident in anything that I do with a bike so it'll actually work Because like, it never really fails, but I'm just never confident that anything will work. To the detriment of if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then what was the one where I didn't? There was one time where I was like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I was going to do something. Uh, and wasn't going to do it because we were about to do a longer ride and then it broke on itself forcing me to fix it. Oh yeah, my rear wheel seized up, that was it. I was like, I'm going to fix that but I don't really want to fix it the day before a big ride. And then it seized up on the big ride. It's great.
Skyways? Ah, oh, the mag wheels. Mag wheels are sick. Look up uh, spinergy wheels. They're sick. Sick on road bikes, less like BMXs. But well, they only did a road bike version, but they're sick. Mag wheels are cool. Spinergy's got banned. Um, banned from professional cycling and the rumour has it the reason they got banned because the UCI never actually gives proper reasoning rumour has it the reason they got banned was that they decapitated a rabbit at an off-road race which fuck it I'm sticking to it it's hilarious Either that or Paolo Bertini caught his hand in some. That was the other one. Don't do Scott. Do they not? Huh. I mean, oh, they would be heavy though. They'd be fucking so heavy. Actually, I bet it's two reasons. One, they'd be heavy. Two, the quality control that you'd have to have on them to keep them actually straight. Like, the smaller it is, the easier it is, the less forces there are, all of that, keeping them straight. Versus 26 inch, it's gonna be fucking difficult to keep those things even close to straight. I think it was Zip that said that their tri-spoke, three-spoke carbon wheels that they do for triathletes, I think they said that they throw away like 90% of those wheels because they come out of the mould and walk. And it's like, phew. That's why I don't like carbon stuff, because it's so wasteful. Like it's expen it's not carbon's not expensive because of the manufacturing costs, because of the parts or anything like that. It's throwaway it's the throwaways. It's the amount of stuff that you throw away and the fact that you you know, if you throw away ninety percent, you're effectively throwing away ninety percent of the time. Even if the cost of the materials is like twenty quid per they're gonna cost a few thousand you know even if the material cost is 20 quid per that's 200 quid to get one if it's a temp you know if you only get 10% of them 200 quid material cost but fucking throwing away all that time and molds are expensive so if you're throwing away 90% and you can do say you know it takes three hours to make one where well, you need ten moulds and ten people and and that'll get you one per one, one per cycle so it's absolutely mad so is the industry went hookless on stuff
Hmm. Oh, they look cool. They do 700 C. Jesus Christ. Base six, forty-six, two. Really? Cheers, Turbo. 